Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So today we will be solving the problem number of enclaves. Now what does the problem state? The problem states are given an n cross m binary matrix grid where 0 represents a C cell and 1 represents a LAN cell. A move consists of walking from one LAN cell to another adjacent LAN cell or walking off the boundary of the grid. Now the point to notice is you are allowed to move in four directions. Find the number of land cells in grid for which we cannot walk off the boundary of the grid in any number of moves. So basically, if you stand over here and since there are like four kind of movements, you can try moving in. You cannot move here. You cannot move here. You can move here. But after this, you might move here. After this, you cannot move here because this is not a land. So if you start from here, you cannot move out of this particular boundary. If you use these four directions, you cannot move. But whereas if you take this particular one and if you move to the right, you will be able to move out of the boundary. If you take this one and you move to the right, you will be able to move out of the boundary. If you take this one and you move to the bottom, you will be able to move out of the boundary. Same with this. So these four ones, you will be able to move out of the boundary. But from these four ones, you will not be able to move out of the boundary. So the question is very straightforward. Count the number of ones, yes, or the number of lands. This is this is what the question states. So for me, from here, I cannot move out of the boundary. From here, I cannot move out. From here, I cannot. From here, I cannot. But if I tweak uh, the example a bit, let's tweak the example and let's change it to one. So if I change it to one, now whatever you took, like all these ones, uh, let's see, raise, yeah. So if I change this to one, you will see from here, you can go up, you can go up and you can move out of the boundary. From here, you can go here, then you can go here, then you can go here, out of the boundary. From here, you can go here, then here, then here, then out of the boundary. So all of these guys can actually go out of the boundary. This can also go out of the boundary. This can also go out of the boundary. This can also go out of the boundary. So if I place one here, then everyone can go out of the boundary. So in that case, the answer will be zero, saying there are zero lands from where you cannot go out of the boundary. So you need to be careful, right? So what is the first intuition that comes to your brain? That's definitely something that is connected to the boundary. Something that is connected to the boundary. They will never be your answer. They will never be your answer, right? Something that is connected to the boundary. Now, can I elongate this to saying something that is connected to this, 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 this will also be not part of your answer because from there also you can move out. So for an example, if I put a one here, let's put a one here and let's understand. So as of now, these are the boundaries which are connected, right? These are the boundaries ones which are connected, boundary ones which are connected. So can I say from these boundary ones, all those ones which are connected. So for this guy, this is connected directly. Then for this guy, this is connected directly. For this guy, this is connected directly. And for this guy, this is connected directly. Can I say this? Or you can be like, for this guy, this is connected directly. For this guy, this and this is connected directly. For this, this, this is connected directly. In short, anything that is connected to the boundary ones from that land, you will always go out. So they will never be part of your answer because you need to count the ones from where you cannot go out from where you cannot go out. So we got an intuition that if we figure out the boundary ones, if we figure out the boundary ones and then connect all the ones and then connect all the ones connected to it at the end of the day, the remaining ones that are not connected to the boundary ones will be my answer, isn't it? So let's take this particular example and figure out how many lands will be part of your answer. Can I say these three lands will always be part of your answer? Obviously. Why? Because if you take these guys, all of these guys, you can actually walk out. Again, if you take these, you can walk out. But from here, you cannot. So I can say these three lands will be part of your answer. So the answer is three for this. So how will you start? Which, which algorithm will we use? So in the previous video, we did use the DFS algorithm to traverse from the boundary things. 
So over here, we will try to implement the BFS just to get a clarity about these algorithms. So what is BFS? BFS is basically you start off from a node and then you move across to everyone. So how many boundary nodes are there? Can I say we have a boundary node here? We have a boundary node here. We have a boundary node here and we have a boundary node here. Can I see this? So what you do is let's uh, quickly mark down the row numbers and the column numbers. So can I say all of these are the boundary, the blue ones are the boundary ones. So let's take a Q data structure. If I take a Q data structure and let's put down all these boundary guys. So the first boundary guy will be 0, 3. Let's put it. Next will be 0, 4. Let's put it. Next will be 4, 3. Next will be 4, 4. So I have put down all these four boundary guys. Done. And if you remember well enough, if you remember well enough, one thing you can do is you can convert this to 0, 0. That is something you can do. But you know, we never ever touch these guys because this is the data. So what I will do is I'll create the corresponding visited array. So let's quickly create the corresponding visited array. So once you've created the corresponding visited array for 0, 3, mark it as 1. For 0, 4, mark it as 1. This one mark it as 1. This one mark it as 1. So this will be your visited array. Done. Now what is your next step? Perform the BFS traversal. The BFS traversal, what does it say? Get out the first guy. So that's 0, 3. And you know it will be in four directions. Check for the four directions from 0, 3. So there is one direction here which is invalid. There's one direction here which is having a 0. There is one here which is already marked as visited. And there is someone in the bottom which is unvisited. So take this bottom guy and put this into your Q data structure. And at the same time, mark this as 1. So what I can say is, okay, fine. For 0, 3, I've done the BFS traversal. Let's take the next guy out, which is 0, 4. So we have 0, 4. Where does it lie? Here. Does it have someone on the top? No. Does it have someone on the left? Yes. But that is already visited. Does it have someone on the right? No. Does it have someone on the bottom? 0. So apparently this 0, 4 will not be connected to anyone else. Let's take the next guy, which is 4, 3. So if I take 4, 3, which is this guy, not connected, not connected, invalid, already visited. So 4, 3 is also not connected to anyone. Let's see the next guy. 4, 4. Let's see for 4, 4. This is 4, 4. Top not connected, already visited, invalid, nothing. So 4, 4 is also not connected to anyone. Let's see the next guy. 1, 3. So if I take 1, 3, where is 1, 3? 1, 3 is here. So if I carefully observe on the top, already visited. Over here, 0. Over here, 0. And there's a 1 over here, which is, un, which is unvisited, which is unvisited. So I'll visit this particular 1, and that is 1, 2. And I'll mark it as visited. So I can say I have connected everything that was connected to 1, 3. The next step, I'll get 1, 2. Once you have 1, 2, which is this, unvis uh, 0, already visited, 0, 0. So 1, 2 is no more connected to anyone. So as of now, if you carefully see this particular queue is empty. And what I have done is these guys were connected to these guys. So I have marked these guys all also because those were directly connected. So once the queue is empty, if you carefully observe, there was a one here, which is unvisited. There was a one here, which is unvisited. There was a one here, which is unvisited. There was a one here, which is visited. There was a one here, which is visited. So apparently, only these three ones are unvisited in the visited matrix. Thereby, from like, you can't go to the boundary from these ones because you always took all the boundary ones and you expanded your connections. You expanded your connections and these ones were never reached, which means that from these places, you cannot go to the boundaries. Thereby, what you can do is you can just count the answer and the answer will be three. Just do a traversal and for this one, there's a zero. For this one, there's a zero. For this one, there is a zero. Just do a counter plus plus and you can always count the particular answer. Just take a counter and do a counter plus plus and you can always count your answer. So as usual, we will write the C++ code on the right and the Java code is visible on the left. So what do we have? We have the number of enclaves and we have the grid, correct? So what I will do is I will at first figure out the boundary ones and we have to put that into the queue data structure. So let's take a queue data structure, which will be storing the row and columns. Perfect. And at the same time, please, please uh, do this. Get this uh, size of the grid. And yeah, perfect. You've got the size of the grid. Next thing, 
please create this visited uh, matrix i'll just do int visited of n m and i'll mark everything as unvisited perfect now what you will do is please go across to all the boundary guys so one thing you can do is you can either traverse for first row first column last row last column or you can traverse through the entire matrix and we know the first column first row will always have the i value as zero or the column value as zero or the row value will be n minus one or the column value will be m minus one this is when you can say it's a part of first row first column last row and last column this is what you can say right so over here what you'll say is if this is the case yes if this is the case and you find out that the grid of ij is one which means it is a land if it is a land can you please ask the queue to store this guy and once you've asked the queue can you say this to be visited perfect once you've done everything let's do the bfs traversal which is super simple which is q dot empty right and you say okay what's the row number can i say as q dot front dot first yes and can i say the column number as q dot front dot second i can and now what i will say is q dot pop and i need to visit the neighbors and you know how to visit the neighbors how many uh kinds of neighbors are there one at the top one at the right one at the bottom one on the left and if this is your row and column the upper one is row minus one column the right one is row comma column plus one the down one is row plus one column the this one is row comma column minus one so what are the changes in row and column for this the change is minus one zero for this the change is plus zero plus one for this the change is plus one plus zero for this the change is plus zero minus one so these are the delta changes that you have to do so well you can just store them in some delta row and delta column and this can be the zeroth index first index second index and third index in this way you can easily pick them up so i'll just store them in delta row i just went through very fast because i've explained this a lot of times so i don't want to waste any further time i've explained this in the graph series a lot of times so del column equal to zero plus one plus zero minus one this is something which you will do done and now what you'll do is you have to traverse all the four directions because for this guy for this cell the land will get connected to every one of the four directions so just make sure it traverses all the four directions so it traverses all four directions if that should be your first priority that it traverses all four directions so just go as like ind i equal to zero i lesser than four i plus plus and i can see the neighboring row is very simple it's the current row plus the del the change that we figured out that the neighboring column is column plus the del column of i and now just have a check if this is greater than or equal to zero and if this is lesser than n and and n column is greater than or equal to zero and and n column is lesser than m once this is checked have the next check as visited row and visited column are they not previously visited once this is checked it has to be a land as well so have a check if this is a land if all of these satisfy what you need to do is you need to say q can you please store these new guys which is n row and n column at the same time can you please go and mark these n row and n column to be true once you have done all of these things at the end of the day you need a counter to count so take a counter as zero and just go across this int i equal to zero and i less than n i plus plus and you can just do for j equal to zero j less than m j plus plus at the same time you can say if the grid is containing this one and it is unvisited okay then i can say counter plus plus and at the end of the day i can go and return that counter which will be my answer so this is how the entire code will look like so let's talk about the space complexity that we are using we're definitely using a visited matrix and a queue so at max the space complexity will be n cross m plus the q space that we are using so we can say it as n cross m to be the space complexity what about the time complexity q dot empty assuming all the pieces to be land assume you have a matrix like one 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 and one 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 so you're going to visit all the matrix so the q is going to run over all the matrix so n cross m is what the number of matrix you'll run across and for every time you have four directions to travel so for so this will be the time complexity and yeah this is n cross m and this is n cross m so overall if you nearby it 
it'll be somewhere near to n cross m so guys i hope i was able to explain you this particular question so just in case i was please make sure you like this video and if you're new to our channel what are you waiting for like what are you waiting for hit that subscribe button right away and if you haven't checked out our dp series tree series and the sd sheet the links are in the description with this i'll be wrapping up this video let's meet in some other video till then bye bye take care broken